when I first heard about solar geoengineering as an atmospheric chemist, I thought this was an absolutely crazy idea and even considering this was really quite out there. For a long time, it was considered kind of a fringe or a wacky idea for a couple of reasons. I mean, in part, this, this stuff sounds like science fiction, and it also sounds like a desperate type of human response. This stuff sounds like science fiction, and it also sounds like a desperate type of human response. In the quiet waters of Alameda, aboard the historic USS Hornet, a groundbreaking experiment aimed at curbing global warming recently sparked a heated debate. The University of Washington, alongside several notable research institutions, embarked on a marine cloud brightening project this April. Their goal? To explore how tiny sea salt particles could help reflect sunlight back into space, potentially cooling the Earth. However, various scientists have raised concerns about the broader implications of geoengineering projects like this. Critics argue that manipulating the environment could have unforeseen consequences, including changes in regional weather patterns and biodiversity loss, urging for thorough global regulations and impact assessments before further implementation. The project, however, soon found itself under scrutiny. It began on April 2nd, with scientists utilizing the decommissioned aircraft carrier as a base for their pioneering research. But it wasn't until a demonstration caught the eye of the Chronicle that the city officials became acutely aware of the activities taking place. The city of Alameda, concerned about potential health and environmental impacts, stepped in swiftly. By May 4th, the city had publicly expressed their concerns, revealing that the experiments were conducted without their knowledge. This revelation led to an immediate halt of the project. The city cited a breach of their lease agreement with the USS Hornet as the primary reason for their intervention. Additionally, this incident has sparked wider concerns leading to a handful of states now banning any form of solar geoengineering, citing similar environmental and health risks. The researchers, on the other hand, claim to have informed the city about their plans, describing the project as an atmospheric science educational exhibit. They even paused their research voluntarily, pending a detailed city review initiated by the flurry of news articles in early April. In response to rising concerns, the city hired a consulting firm to assess whether the microscopic chemical compounds used in the experiment posed a respiratory hazard. Preliminary findings suggested that the aerosol emissions were within safe regulatory thresholds. Kelly Wanser, a senior advisor to the project, reassured the public that all emissions were monitored and reported to local air quality authorities. As the city awaits a comprehensive report from the consulting firm, the future of this research hangs in the balance. The findings, expected to be released soon, will be crucial. They will not only influence public opinion but will also play a significant role in the City Council's decision this coming June. What happens next could set a precedent for how innovative yet controversial environmental research is handled not just in Alameda but potentially across other regions as well. As the City Council prepares to review the findings, the scientific community and residents alike await with bated breath. Will the project that promises a cooler planet be allowed to resume? Or will the concerns over local health and environmental impacts steer the future of such experiments towards stricter regulations or even a complete halt? The decision in June will undoubtedly be a significant milestone in the ongoing dialogue between scientific innovation and environmental stewardship. When I first heard about solar geoengineering as an atmospheric chemist, I thought this was an absolutely crazy idea and even considering this was really quite out there. For a long time, it was considered kind of a fringe or a wacky idea for a couple of reasons. I mean, in part, this, this stuff sounds like science fiction. I'm making plays. I'm making plays. I'm making hits. I'm making hits. I'm making plays. I'm making plays. I never miss. I never miss. Haters gon' hate. They gon' hate. This stuff sounds, sounds like science fiction. fiction.